Hello, I'm on my way to get a coffee at this place called Dessert Oasis Coffee Roasters. I keep wanting to call it Desert Oasis, but I think that's part of the play on words. Whenever I travel or I'm in a new city, I love looking up coffee shops, checking them out, and then I'm gonna head to the John K. King used and rare bookstore. I'm so excited. This one has been on my bucket list for a long time. So after I refuel with some coffee, maybe a croissant, then I'm gonna head to the bookstore. So excited to check it out, but need a little fuel first. So that's where we're heading. Desert Oasis, I keep calling it Desert Oasis, coffee roasters, and now I'm on my way to John King Used and Rare Bookstore. I'm so excited. This one has been high on my bucket list to visit. Apparently it's America's largest used bookstore. I don't know if that's actually true. At least maybe it's Michigan's largest used bookstore, but there's over a million books. I'm heading there now, it's a quick little walk, and luckily it's a pretty nice day out. So I just arrived at the bookstore, you can see it right behind me, so I'm gonna head inside and I actually brought my book bag because I do want to stock up on some books. Hello, so I've arrived at the bookstore, John K. King Used and Rare Bookstore. They have over a million books and over three stories above ground. It's a huge giant warehouse of books, so I'm very excited to check it out. I want to get a bunch of kind of like vintage female heroine authored books. I really want to start my collection of like Virginia Woolf, Jane Austen, Toni Morrison, Sylvia Plath, all of them and I feel like this is the place to find those kinds of books. But again that's the best part of used book shopping is I feel like the book really does find the reader instead of like the reader finding the book if you know what I mean. Very Harry Potter but yeah I can't wait to go inside and check it out.
I'm finally heading home. It is like three hours later. I'm not even kidding. I spent so long in there. There are so many books, but the staff is so helpful. I know everyone always says that, but honestly, they were the cutest and the nicest. And if you ask them for any author, they knew exactly where it was in over a million books. And on, there's four different floors. It's crazy. I thought it was three floors, but it's three stories, four floors with like a little basement. Holy crap. It was very cool. I got a couple of books. They did not have any Joan Didion, any Virginia Woolf, Toni Morrison, or Jane Austen, or Sylvia Plath, because they said those are their most popular and they sell out really quickly as soon as they get a kind of inventory or shipment in of those classics. I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm basic then if I was trying to pick up books on those, but I did find a couple others and I'll show you back at the hotel. Bye. So I feel like Detroit's kind of like a ghost town. Like there's cars, but there's hardly anyone on the streets. But the bookstore was bumping. It was so, so, so busy. And the people who work there said, it's not normally like this, but I think it's because it's kind of nice weather. So everyone's out and about. But again, the streets when I'm walking around are just kind of completely deserted. Feels a little bit like the apocalypse. I'm walking on a busy street now, so there are cars, but before when you kind of weave in and out, there's no one. Anyway, I'm excited to get back to the hotel, freshen up a little bit, do some work in the room. Bye! seen the room yet and I'm obsessed. He said we're in a deluxe. Whoa, this is so freaking nice. Ooh, a little writing desk. I can get some work done. Parking lot city view. Okay, this is sweet. Nice king bed. Check out the bathroom. Oh, hello. Ooh, nice glassware. We like it. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Really nice shower. Cute little shampoo, conditioner, and body cleanser. Wow, this is amazing. I like the little frosted window. Wow. This room is so cool. I can't wait to settle in for the night. Quick little 36 hour trip. We've got a mirror here at the front entrance. A guest guide, ooh, I'll be checking that out. And then some fun little goodies. And a well-stocked mini fridge. I'm a huge sucker for nice hotel stationery. So this makes me very happy. I keep track when I'm writing a new book. I do little chapter trackers on hotel stationery. So it's so fun. I have like all these different hotels that we've been to throughout the years or that I've stayed at. And I create little boxes and I check off when I have written a chapter or if I'm editing when I've edited a chapter of my book. And it's fun little way to visually see my progress on a day to day and week to week basis. So very excited hello welcome back to the vlog from detroit michigan i'm currently here for 36 hours a very quick 
one night stay, one and a half days in the city. It was actually a pretty spontaneous decision. Jeff is playing in a two day poker tournament and I just decided to join him. He booked a very cool hotel room, which I'm in right now. And yeah, we're only staying one night and Detroit is three hours from where I live in Toronto. So yeah, I always forget that Michigan is very close to Canada. I don't know why. I think of Buffalo, New York. We would sometimes cross the border to go over to Buffalo, but you just kind of drive to Windsor in Canada and then you cross the bridge and you're in Detroit. So quick little rip for 36 hours and I'm excited to make the most of it. Explore a bookshop, go to some great coffee shops, go for a great dinner. Jeff does get a dinner break so we're gonna get to have dinner together and maybe even go check out this bar. I've been here once before. It was again for another one of Jeff's poker tournaments. And when we were here, we went to this place called The Breakman. It's kind of like this bar and they have shuffleboard, a whole bunch of games, and then a fried chicken shop in the back. We had the best time. We went during the day, just played shuffleboard, a whole bunch of different games. So we're hoping to, after dinner, we're just gonna have dinner at a place called The Apparatus Room. It is actually in the hotel lobby. It's the restaurant bar, but it has this really beautiful big bar banquette so we love sitting at the bar it's kind of like dinner and a show i feel you get to kind of see the bartender making drinks and it's just fun lively atmosphere and then i believe he'll go back poker tournaments are very long it's kind of survival of the mentally fittest so he could play until 2 a.m yeah very long time but i'm happy that we still get a little break a little date night in here and then today i had the best day i love exploring cities i've been here like i said once before but i didn't have as much time to kind of mosey around but yeah i love exploring new cities new bookshops coffee shops walking around just kind of being immersed in a new environment nothing fills my soul more than exploring and i love solo travel solo exploring so for me this is a real treat and just great that i get to do it so yeah this morning we just got up left about 7 7 30 in the morning picked up mcdonald's breakfast egg mcmuffin coffee hash brown for a little road trip, listen to a podcast on the way here. It, the drive was so quick, so easy, crossing the border, no problem at all. Just had to remember to bring our passports, which I almost forgot, because it just feels like you're just driving three hours, but oh no, we're actually crossing a border. So yeah, super easy peasy, got here. He dropped me off, he went right to the tournament, so he would be late for that. Our room wasn't ready yet, which I expected it wouldn't be, but they kindly held my backpack for me. So timing-wise, it actually worked out perfectly because I already planned to explore the city and go to this bookshop and a coffee shop for a few hours before I could check back into this room. And then I went to a place called Dessert Oasis Coffee Roasters. It was one of the top-rated coffee shops nearby in the city there's another one called mad cap that hopefully i'll get to go to tomorrow it looks great as well so i went got a latte and a croissant and also milked their wi-fi because i'm in the states i didn't change over my data plan so i was just using wi-fi to get walking directions <laughs> everywhere and then i headed to the bookstore everything was really close I think I mentioned earlier, Detroit and the streets are pretty deserted, pretty empty. The bookshop is like a 10, 15 minute walk from the hotel. So I just went there, checked it out. I spent almost three hours there. I know that sounds excessive if you're not a book lover, but this is the biggest bookstore I've ever been in. They call themselves America's largest used bookstore. I still have to fact check that if it's true. It definitely is Michigan's largest bookstore. Four floors, over 1 million books and it's just so fun perusing, seeing what different books kind of pique your interest, spark curiosity, and the staff there was incredible. If you ask them for an author or a title, they would immediately tell you which aisle, what floor, and which shelf where it was, which I don't know how they do that with over a million books and people with so many different reading tastes. So that was really nice, and they're always walking around the different floors, so you can ask them anything and there's a lot of great signage it just made exploring fun and that for me is one of the best things just getting lost amongst the stacks so that was great by the end because it's a little bit dusty it's a huge warehouse and there's so many used books my eyes were a little bit bloodshot just from the dust but i had so much fun it exceeded my expectations i got to take some pictures and document some footage for bookshop bucket list so that was great 
and then came back, checked into the hotel, room was ready, and it's really nice. It's This is the Deluxe King. I don't know, I think we got like a free upgrade. I don't think Jeff booked this, but I'll find out. He's still playing poker, so I'll ask him when he comes back for dinner. But I've just been doing a little bit of work in the room, a little bit of reading, working on my book. I love that they have a writing desk. That is my ultimate favorite thing in a hotel room when they have a great writing desk set up. I can just unload my laptop, my pencil case, my notebooks, my agenda, set it all up as though I live here, even though again, it's only one night, but I've been having a good time and being really productive actually. I, I promised earlier I want to show you my little mini book haul from John K. King Used Books. So I went in there, I wanted to add to my collection of female classic authors like Sylvia Plath, Toni Morrison, Jane Austen, Virginia Woolf, that kind of thing. And even Joan Didion, she's a little bit more modern, but I wanted to get some old, really cool copies at a very cheap price to bring back home with me. That's my favorite thing in used bookstores is to get classic books at very, very low cost to kind of set up my library in my home office. And they didn't have any of it. I, they're like, they're very popular. So as soon as we get some of that inventory in, immediately they go. And I was like, oh, that kind of makes sense made me feel very basic, the fact that I was asking for Virginia Woolf and they go, oh no, we don't have any of her this week, yeah, check back again. So I do like that they kind of know what's popular. I really liked on the first floor, they have an entire section of classics, so it's fun to peruse through there. And then the writing reference section for me, I love writing craft books and kind of going through all of that, it really sparks a lot of creativity and motivation for me to look through that. And then on the third floor, I spent a lot of time there because they have all of their fiction books alphabetized by author. So they said some of the Joan Didion books could be mixed in there. I couldn't find any, but what I did find and what I did pick up, let me show you. Ta-da! So the first book, this was $5. It might be a little bit weird, but it's from 1950s and it's Johnson's Dictionary. That is my last name. And I thought I was gonna get it either for me or my dad. He's kind of like me, a bit of an old soul. He loves old books and things that have meaning. And I just, for some reason, I thought this could be really cool for his office or for his shelf. I mean, selfish, I was like, oh, this could be cool for my office if he doesn't want it. But yeah, just Johnson's Dictionary. And then flipping through, they have some very like old fashioned language, hilarious. Or even some words I don't know, like, a cager, a huckster, one who brings butter, eggs, and poultry from the country to the market. Okay. But even here, just opening it, I love kind of the vintage sentences they have for some of the words. Like here they have pocketbook, a paper book carried in the pocket for hasty notes. That's so cute to me. Or potaster, a vile petty poet. Horace hath exposed those trifling potasters. Anyway, thought that was a very cool book. And then when I opened it up, it had a bookmark in it from whoever donated this book. It's from the Austin Bookshop, old, rare, and out of print books in New York. And this is a very old bookmark from the 1950s. So that's really just one of the things that I love about perusing rare and used bookstores. You find these little hidden treasures of like who owned this book before and what life did it have before this. So I thought that was really cool. And the second book, a little pocket penguin book, The Writer's Home Companion. Anecdotes, comforts, recollections, other amusements for every writer, editor, and reader. I thought that was so cute. And the description on the back also was just so easy for me to kind of pop in my purse as a little writing companion. It says, amusing tales of writer's block, lost manuscripts, rejection, and unexpected triumphs. For centuries, writers have faced heartless criticism, horrifying catastrophe, and the forces of nature. Yet many have gone on to write and publish their work, from the great classics to the flash in the pan. Collected here are the woes of writing. Read them for entertainment or reassurance. So it talks about James Joyce's Dubliner's book was rejected by 21 publishers. Kind of gives you a little bit of hope of, okay, these greats faced rejection in writer's block too and you're not alone in writing. So I just thought that was so cute and it just called out to me on the shelf. So I was excited to pick that up. So that's my little book haul. I, to be honest, was expecting that I would pick up more, 
but I was getting a little overwhelmed at the end when they didn't have some of the authors that I was going in there looking for and these two spoke to me so yeah I'm very happy with my little purchase. So Detroit, the people call it the Motor City because it's where the automobile industry was born. So a huge boom when everyone was here that working for car companies. And then about 10 years ago, Detroit filed for bankruptcy once all of those car com companies exited and there's all these abandoned warehouses, homes. It really did feel probably even more so 10 years ago, kind of like this abandoned apocalyptic city but it is definitely starting to gentrify now i think of it as maybe not a great reference but kind of as like a really hip brooklyn at least in the downtown core all of these huge warehouses had cheap leases so there's really fun hip kind of gritty cool uh restaurants coffee shops and bars that are coming into the downtown core hotels so we're staying in the detroit foundation hotel which is amazing it's a hundred rooms only five floors and it was formerly the detroit fire department until 2013. so after 2013 it became a hotel but this entire building was built in 1929 and you can see from the outside they had still have the big red doors the whole lobby bar where all the fire trucks used to be parked is now the restaurant the apparatus room and there's still fire pools and hoses in the hallways and everything so it's a really neat hip hotel so yeah i feel like detroit tends to sometimes get a bad rap but it is a very neat city eminem grew up here kid rock madonna grew up here a lot of people don't know that aretha franklin it's also the home to motown music so i find there's so much of that artistic creative influence everywhere there's beautiful art murals and all the old historic buildings and really interesting i learned that detroit was one of the last stops of the Underground Railroad because it's so close to Canada and Canada abolished slavery over 30 years before the US. So a lot of people were taking the Underground Railroad trying to get to Canada and Detroit was one of the last stops. Yeah, really cool. I don't work for the tourism board at all. I just always wanna kinda talk about where I am and what I find interesting about a new place. And yeah, I love researching anytime I go somewhere, even if it's, even if it's for a night, I am just obsessed with finding out as much as I can, so. I think it's cool, wanted to share it with you. Jeff just texted, he's on his way home for dinner break and a little quick change of plans. Instead of eating in the lobby because of timing, he said, do you wanna just go right to the Breakman and maybe we could have dinner. The little fried chicken place at the back is called Penny Reds. So he's like, we could just get like a bucket of fried chicken, fries, it is so good. Um, and then just play games. Or there's a restaurant across the street which is also delicious called Wright & Co. And it's kind of similar to the apparatus room in this hotel. It's a huge long banquet bar. We could just sit at the bar, order our dinner there. So game time decision, we'll figure it out when he gets here. I'm down for either one of those. They both look really good. So that's the plan. <laughs>